Hey folks, this is Riker, bringing you a Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls guide to a new 2.2 wizard build that is being used to top the Greater Rift leaderboards. Now, patch 2.2 is still young, so we may still see other builds emerge as the best, but as of this recording, in North America, this build and variants of this build is what you see at the top of the solo wizard leaderboards. Using this build and with optimum gear, and practicing the intricate playstyle, you can be pushing Greater Rifts in the 50s. Now this build revolves all around the new Tal Rasha's set, which forces you into a playstyle that combines Arcane, Cold, Fire, and Lightning skills. Each damage type will call down a Meteor and build up a stacking buff. So while you could play this build by just spamming mindlessly, and still do well enough to get into the 30s and 40s, you're gonna have to be really conscientious of your playstyle and learn to practice timing your attacks and stacks if you ever want to hope to get up there with the top dogs. But hey, there's nothing wrong with mindless spamming either, and even suboptimally and with no practice, you can crack the 40s. So let's take a look at the skills. For your primary, you're gonna want to use Electrocute, and then the rune you're gonna go with will either be Arc Lightning or Surge of Power. We see both of these runes used at the top levels of play, and the difference is that Arc Lightning deals a lot of damage but very, very close to you, whereas Surge of Power can be used at extremely long range, and as a bonus gives you back Arcane Power. This build is pretty in your face, which makes Arc Lightning an inviting option, but if you feel you prefer to have some distance between yourself and the enemy, you might want to go with Surge of Power. One thing's for sure though, when you're doing Greater Rift Trials, I found that Arc Lightning enables me to get higher keystones than Surge of Power. And part of the issue here is that the Tal Rasha Meteors are called down on the enemies that are struck. So Arc Lightning forces that Meteor to come down right on top of you. So if you're getting Gang Bang, that's going to be great damage in a tight area. But the disadvantage there is you lose the option to start building stacks from a distance or calling down meteors from a distance using Electrocute in the event that you ever feel the need to withdraw from a difficult situation. Still, play around with both and see which one works best for you. Next, we have Hydra, Mammoth Hydra. That's going to be your source of fire damage. Again, we're looking to hit all four of those elements. Lightning, Fire, Cold, and Arcane. And our arcane damage is actually going to come in the form of Teleport Calamity. The Calamity rune casts an arcane wave of force wherever you teleport. So you're actually going to be mostly teleporting offensively. Your cold damage will come from Blizzard Frozen Solid. And this skill will also be a source of control impairing effects. And that's so that we can proc our Bane of the Trap gem, which we're going to get to later. Next we have Magic Weapon Force Weapon. That's a straight damage buff. Real simple. But I've also seen the Deflection Rune used instead, and that sacrifices 10% additional damage for an Absorb Shield. Then lastly, we have Ice Armor Crystallize. We're going to be in melee range a lot, because we have to teleport in to deal our big damage. So that melee damage reduction will be really useful, plus the added buff from being struck in melee. But most importantly, we'll get to an item that makes this skill indispensable. Now, onto the passives. We have Illusionist. And we are using Illusionist to reset the cooldowns on our powers, specifically on Teleport. You see, Teleport has an 11 second cooldown, and our Tal Rasha Meteors could call down an Arcane Meteor every 8 seconds. So to be optimal, you want to be casting Teleport every 8 seconds. Instead of stacking cooldown reduction, Illusionist actually makes you benefit from taking damage in melee in order to reset Teleport, cast more Meteors, or even use Teleport defensively in case you're taking too much damage and need to withdraw. Next, we have Arcane Dynamo, and we're using this to buff our big hits. Next, Elemental Exposure. The premise of the Tal Rasha set is basically an expansion of the core design philosophy behind Elemental Exposure. You want to be damaging enemies with all four elements so that you can build up damage stacks and ultimately maximize the impact of your meteors. Lastly, we have Unstable Anomaly. This is your free resurrection power, and used just as often actually is Blur, which just decreases damage taken by 17%. Again, use whichever one you prefer, since you're going to be a very aggressive, melee-focused wizard. Taking less damage may actually be beneficial over a free res every minute, but go with what you prefer. Now, onto gear. You need to get your 6-piece Talrasha set bonus. And optimally, that'll be with all six pieces of Tal Rasha's, 
rather than five pieces and a ring of royal grandeur. What we most commonly see among the top players is a tall Rasha helm, chest, belt, pants, offhand, and amulet. And that's so that you can swap out the gloves for Tasker and Theo. And you'll want to combine the Tasker and Theo with the Serpent Sparker. The Serpent Sparker allows you to have two Mammoth Hydras out, and Tasker and Theo buffs those Hydras. Now, the ideal bracers you'll want are the Ancient Parthen Defenders, and that's because stunned enemies around you will reduce the amount of damage you take. And what does Teleport Calamity do? It stuns enemies. So right when you teleport in and you're in the thick of things, and at your most vulnerable, your Ancient Parthens are giving you a nice survivability boost. For your boots, Nilfer's Boast is indispensable to this build. This massively buffs your Meteor damage, and further buffs it when a Meteor only strikes three enemies or fewer. Now, if you don't have a Serpent Sparker, you can go with something like a Sunkeeper instead, which deals bonus damage to elites, or a Devastator, which increases your fire damage, and is a craftable weapon, so you can very easily get a well-rolled Ancient One. And of course, if you're going with the Devastator, likewise, by the same token, if you don't have Tasker and Theo, you can go with Mage Fist instead, but we're really seeing the top dogs using Tasker and Theo and Serpent Sparker. Now lastly, the rings. For maximum solo survivability, you want a unity. One for yourself, one for your companion, and you equip the companion with a token that makes him invulnerable. That effectively doubles your toughness. Apart from that, the ring that all the top players are using is the Halo of Arlees. And that makes your ice armor reduce damage from melee attacks by 50 to 60% and automatically casts Frost Nova whenever you take 10% of your life in damage. This gives you a tremendous boost to survivability and crowd control. And it's this ring that really allows you to blitz in and play this build as aggressively and fast as possible. Now a quick overview of what stats you want on your items. Starting with shoulders, it doesn't really matter what legendary shoulders you go with, just stack survivability stats on it. For your helm, you want intelligence, crit chance, meteor damage, and a socket with an amethyst in there. For the amulet, normally, before 2.2, the perfect amulet in general across all builds and classes was socket, crit damage, crit chance, and elemental damage. But because this build isn't focused on one element in particular, you're better off going with intelligence versus elemental damage, so that all your meteors and attacks benefit from the damage, rather than just the hydra and the fire meteors. On your gloves, obviously intelligence, then crit damage, crit chance, and even attack speed because now the Hydras scale with your attack speed. That said, attack speed is not a priority, but it is helpful. Your chest piece just stack defensive stats. Your bracers, you want fire damage, intelligence, vitality, and crit chance. And the reason we're going for fire here is because of all the individual sources of damage you'll be dealing, the Mammoth Hydras will be the biggest contributor. Your belt, defensive stats. Your pants, defensive stats. Your boots, defense, and meteor damage. Just make sure that you're able to max out on move speed with Paragon Points. Otherwise, you'd want Intelligence, Vitality, Move Speed, and Meteor Damage. Of course, you want your rings to have a socket. And apart from that, prioritize Critical Hit Damage, Critical Hit Chance. And in the case of a Unity, Elite Damage. And then for your Legendary Gems, Bane of the Trapped is an absolute must. It'll be applying its bonus damage almost all the time. Then the next legendary gem we want is Pain Enhancer, because the attack speed buff will really increase the damage of your Hydra and Electrocute. And then lastly, the top players seem to be split on Esoteric Alteration and Molten Wildebeest's Gizzard. Both of those are defensive gems, so go with whichever one you have higher level. As far as Paragon points go, get your total move speed up to 25%, then dump everything else into Intelligence. For your offense tab, you want to max out critical hit damage and critical hit chance, then attack speed. For your defense, go with all resist, armor, then life. And for utility, resource cost reduction, life on hit, and then area damage. Now one last note on the playstyle. Again, you could just take it very easy and lackadaisically spam your powers, but if you want to be as fast and efficient as possible, which you're not seeing me do because I don't have the practice or experience to do this, you want to start before engaging by spamming Electrocute to get your 5 stacks of Arcane Dynamo, then you want to teleport into a pack of enemies. That'll trigger your Calamity Rune, which actually is not going to be buffed by Arcane Dynamo. Teleport doesn't trigger it. However, it will stun the enemies around you, and it will call down that first Meteor, an Arcane Meteor. Plus, you're going to get your first stack of Talrasha. 
immediately upon teleporting, you cast Hydra. That will get you your second stack and call down a second Meteor. The Hydra will benefit from Arcane Dynamo. Then you cast Blizzard to keep the enemy stun locked, build up a third stack, and call down a third Meteor. After you've cast Blizzard, cast Electrocute until you've built up another 5 stacks of Arcane Dynamo. This will also get you your 4th Talrasha stack and call down the final Lightning Meteor. Then once you're back up to 5 stacks, assuming you have a Serpent Sparker, you're gonna cast your 2nd Hydra, then another Blizzard, and end with Electrocute to build up another 5 stacks, and get you ready to engage the next pack. Or to continue engaging this pack if it's not dead yet. So again, the order of operations is... Electrocute until you got 5 stacks of Arcane Dynamo. Teleport in. Drop 1st Hydra. Drop Blizzard. Electrocute up to 5 stacks. Drop 2nd Hydra. Drop Blizzard. And that last Blizzard should get in before your Talrasha buff runs out. And then you repeat. Back to Electrocute for 5 stacks of Arcane Dynamo. That wraps up this guide. Thanks for watching. Again though, patch 2.2 is still young, so check back in the future for updates to this guide, as well as new guides for wizards and other classes. Check out these other videos, and if you enjoyed this one, share it with friends, leave a comment, hit like, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders.